what are different types of wireless sensor networks so depending on the requirement means this type of need we have which type of work we want to do so depending on that we can design different different wireless sensor network we can think of different types of wireless sensor networks so the depending on the environment the types of network are decided so that those can be deployed underwater underground on land and so on so depending on that we we may term these networks as the terrestrial wireless sensor networks when they are deployed on the earth the underwater wireless sensor network when the wireless sensor network is deployed inside the uh, ground underground sorry underground uh, wireless sensor network when network and the sensor nodes uh, they are deployed under the ground similarly when they are deployed under water then underwater wireless sensor network Uh, then the next the multimedia wireless sensor network mobile wireless multimedia wireless sensor network mobile wireless sensor network now uh, easily we can classify the first three when sensor network is deployed on ground this is terrestrial wireless sensor network when it is underground underground wireless sensor network but when it is under water then under water if i uh, raise a question uh, if i am saying we have underwater wireless sensor network that is multimedia wireless sensor network is it correct it may be correct or not if these sensor have some mobility okay don't say it is mobile <laughs> means sensor is moving then that will be the mobile sensor correct it's not means mobile phone the sensor it has some mobility means sometimes it is located at a location a sometimes it may be at b so it has some mobility so that will be the mobile sensor and the network uh, in which the sensor is present will be termed as the mobile wireless sensor network the multimedia means sensors uh, they are not just uh, you can say the temperature sensor position sensor motion sensor it may be a video sensor means it may sense some video data and then display some things and some other uh, type of voice uh, audio video everything if it is included then that will be the multimedia sensor okay so first come to the terrestrial wireless sensor networks uh this type of sensor networks wireless sensor networks are capable of communicating base station efficiently and consists of hundreds to thousands of wireless sensor nodes deployed either in unstructured means ad hoc manner or in structured means pre planned manner in an unstructured mode the sensor nodes are randomly distributed within the target area that is dropped from a fixed plane uh, the pre planned or structured mode cons considers optimal placement means uh, to fix the sensor position to decide the sensor uh, location position uh, we ha have to have some optimal uh, placement optimal criteria for placement of these sensor so different different grid placement means 2d or 3d placement so optimally we can decide where the sensors to be placed uh, on a grid or in 2d plane or 3d plane okay so in this wireless sensor network the battery power is limited however the battery is equipped with solar cells as a secondary power source where battery power limited means the battery we have it has some capabilities to store the power uh, but uh, the additional thing is provided with the solar cells so it can take power from the solar cell for uh, long operation for long uh, time so the network may be operated for a long time huh? the energy conservation of these wireless sensor networks is achieved by using low duty cycle operation minimizing delays and optimal routing etc etc so there are few things related to these uh, terrestrial wireless sensor networks 
so this is the first thing and uh, they are placed on the ground okay so that's why the network is termed as the terrestrial wireless uh, sensor network now the next category is underground wireless sensor network so uh, this figure it is depicting the placement of sensor network inside the ground means underground left means the underground right means the above ground so the underground wireless sensor networks are more expensive than the terrestrial wireless network in terms of deployment maintenance equipment cost consideration and careful planning it is obvious if the deployment is under the ground then definitely the the deployment is also tough maintenance definitely critical equipment cost means uh, high quality equipment may be required I mean, to avoid damage etc etc so that's why uh, this type of networks uh, uh, the underground are uh, they are more expensive than terrestrial <coughs> Same, uh, same may be true for the underwater network. Okay, the wireless sensor network consists of several sensor nodes that are hidden in the ground to monitor underground conditions, to relay information from the sensor nodes to the base station. Additional sync nodes are located above the ground, means so that they could transmit the information uh, with the lower available energy to nearby ground nodes and then these ground nodes will transmit the information to base station. Okay, means uh, these ground nodes will act like a relay. Huh? <coughs> uh, with this, uh, some disadvantages will also be there. The underground wireless sensor networks deployed into the ground are difficult to recharge. Because we cannot uh, uh, provide the solar panel type of structure to these nodes. Okay, so that's why the battery life, uh, the battery that is used for these nodes, its battery life must be very, uh, it must have a long life. Right? So the sensor battery nodes equipped with the limited battery power are difficult to recharge. Means we cannot uh, recharge the batteries. So definitely, the powerful batteries uh, must have with these type of uh, uh, wireless sensor networks. In addition to this, the underground environment makes wireless communication a challenge due to high level of attenuation and signal loss. Uh, if these nodes are placed in open environment, so we are all familiar with the, the environmental conditions and depending on the situation, the losses may take place the radio frequency may be attenuated by uh, depending on the situation means where the nodes are located whether they are located, uh, located in urban areas uh, or typical urban areas or rural areas so depending on that we can manage the attenuation but transmission of signal radio frequency signal uh, from underground nodes to a base station is definitely a challenging task so these are some challenges associated with these type of networks. The next is the underwater wireless communication, uh, wireless sensor network. So as depicted here, the, the deployment of nodes is inside the water. Uh, so these networks consist of several sensor nodes and vehicle deployed underwater. Uh, autonomous uh, Underwater vehicles are used for gathering data from these sensor nodes. A challenge of underwater communication is long propagation delay and bandwidth and sensor failure. So these are the challenges associated with this type of network. But definitely, uh, we need uh, some information from underwater. Uh, so that's why it is a uh, possible type of system uh, by which we can collect the information. Uh, okay. The underwater wireless sensor networks are equipped with the limited battery that cannot be recharged or replaced. So once battery is lost, the node will be lost. So the second node will be placed in place of that. Uh, the issue of energy conservation for underwater wireless sensor network involves the uh, development of underwater communication and networking techniques. So different different techniques they are used uh, for communication purpose. And uh, different different techniques they are used 
to enhance the life life of these sensor nodes as well. Okay, if a particular technique is used that requires very less power, then definitely life will be increased. So in this way, we can do it. So uh, the advantages and disadvantages uh, we can see in brief associated with each and every type of wireless sensor network. The next is the uh, multimedia wireless sensor network. Now the multimedia wireless sensor network have been proposed to enable tracking, monitoring of events in the form of multimedia, such as now multimedia means audio, video, imaging, everything. Okay, so uh, if we want to capture the image, if we want to take the video as well as audio, so it is termed as the multimedia. So this network consists of low cost sensor nodes equipped with microphones and cameras to capture the video as well as audio. These nodes are interconnected with each other over a wireless connection for data compression, data retrieval and correction. Okay. The challenges with the multimedia wireless sensor network include high energy consumption, high bandwidth required, data processing and compression technique. Uh, processing. Now, multimedia sensor networks, they need, uh, they require a large bandwidth for their operation. Means because uh, if you want to take some picture, then to transmit that picture, large bandwidth is required as compared to voice only. Okay. And when we want to transmit a live video, then further uh, large bandwidth is required. So this is the drawback of the address work means uh, the sensor nodes, uh, the, 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 the sensor uh, elements, they must be capable to be distant with this uh, bandwidth means they must be capable to process the signal of large bandwidth. And uh, some other things is also uh, required with this image processing. I mean, sometimes we want some compression of data because a large amount of data is available and it's not uh, possible to transmit our pro uh, a sensor node cannot process this huge amount of data. So some compression techniques are also required. So to compress and uh, the data, we need a uh, high and techniques tool. So that's why this increases the complexity of this type of network. In addition to this multimedia, Content require high bandwidth. Definitely, if we deal with the audio, video, and everything, then bandwidth uh, requirement will definitely be very high for the contents to be delivered properly and easily. So, this is the drawback of multimedia network, uh, multimedia wireless network. The last is mobile wireless network. These network sorry, these network consist of a collection of sensor nodes that can be moved on their own and can be interacted with physical environment. So when this is true, then the network will be the mobile wireless. The mobile nodes can compute, sense and communicate. The mobile wireless sensor networks are much more versatile than static sensor networks. The advantages of mobile wireless sensor network over the static wireless sensor network include better and improved coverage better energy efficiency, superior channel capacity, and so on. Uh, improved coverage, you can easily understand. Uh, if uh, we have a fixed type of network, the sensor node can receive, transmit the data within the limitation only, means for a given particular position, because they don't have uh, mobility associated with it. But if a node has moving capability, uh, sometimes it is in uh, Kurukshetra, sometimes it may be in Delhi, so better coverage will be possible with that type of system. But at the same time, superior channel capacity, these things uh, don't worry about the simply read it. The channel capacity, they, they, they are the communication terms and uh, uh, they are also superior. Better energy efficiency will also be superior because if sometimes node is closer to base station, uh, less uh, energy transmission reception is required for operation of that particular node. So we can uh, transmit, receive the data with better energy efficiency in case of my mobile wireless sensor network. So this was about the, uh, the, the brief about the wireless sensor network. So the following are the limitations of wireless sensor networks. Number one, uh, possesses very little storage capability, uh, capacity. 
means a uh, wireless sensor network or you may say the complete networks or the elements of uh, this network means nodes uh, uh, they have a very little storage capacity means if we want to take some data and if we want to store this data for further applications or further use then the memory available with these type of networks is very limited okay so this is the biggest drawback of these limited uh, networks uh, it ha uh, the the wireless sensor networks they have modest processing power means the processors they are having uh, they are not of uh, to date uh, standards okay so this is again a limitation you can say because uh, a lot of processing uh, less time should be required a uh, huge amount of data can be processed uh, at instantly but that cannot be uh, the case with this wireless network so this is uh, another limitation uh, the third limitation is <clears throat> they cannot communicate for uh, longer distance so they works in short communication ranges and uh, consume a little bit more power so if we want to design a wireless sensor network that could communicate for a longer distance again a large amount of a huge so usually large antennas base stations are required so the power consumption and other things will be uh, issues so that's why uh, it, the, the wireless sensor networks they work within the short communication range and consumes a lot of more power so that is a, again a limitation the energy requirement they require minimal energy for their own operation so if energy uh, drops below that it cannot process the data and so and so on a lot of things are associated with this so the next uh, limitation is requirement of minimal energy for their own operation then uh, they have storage capability means power storage capability and uh, the power is stored in terms of battery for their uh, own working but these batteries they uh, have a finite lifetime means they cannot be used for infinitely large time so again this is a limitation and passive devices they provide little energy so these are the limitations of